helicopters are among the most versatile and dynamic flying machines ever invented. Unlike fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters have the unique ability to take off and land vertically, hover in place, and maneuver in tight spaces. This makes them indispensable for tasks that require precision and flexibility, such as medical evacuations, search and rescue missions, military operations, and even scenic tours. This video delves into the principles of helicopter flight, the components that make them function, and the technology that continues to shape their evolution. Basic Principles of Helicopter Flight Helicopters operate on a set of fundamental principles that differentiate them from fixed-wing aircraft. At the core of their functionality is the ability to generate lift and thrust through rotating blades, allowing for vertical takeoff, hovering, and multi-directional movement. Here's an explanation of the basic principles that make helicopter flight possible. 1. Lift and thrust. The main rotor blades act like rotating wings, creating lift by pushing air downward. Lift is generated due to the aerodynamic shape of the blades, which produces a difference in pressure above and below the blade, Bernoulli's principle. Adjusting the angle of the rotor blades, blade pitch, controls the amount of lift and thrust, enabling vertical ascent, descent, or forward movement. 2. Torque and counter torque. When the engine powers the main rotor, it creates torque, a rotational force that causes the helicopter's fuse to spin in the opposite direction of the rotor. To counteract this, helicopters use a tail rotor, which generates thrust in the opposite direction of the torque, stabilizing the aircraft. In some helicopter designs, coaxial rotors, two rotors spinning in opposite directions, eliminate the need for a tail rotor. 3. 3. Hovering. A helicopter hovers by balancing lift and thrust precisely against gravity and drag. Hovering is achieved by maintaining the main rotor's thrust equal to the helicopter's weight while keeping the aircraft stable through tail rotor adjustments. 4. Directional control. Helicopters can move forward, backward, and sideways by tilting the main rotor disc using the cyclic control stick. This changes the lift distribution across the rotor blades, causing the helicopter to tilt and move in the desired direction. 5. Auto rotation. In the event of engine failure, Helicopters can descend safely using a principle called auto-rotation. The main rotor continues to spin as air flows upward through the blades during descent, allowing the pilot to maintain control and perform a controlled landing. These principles are at the heart of helicopter operation, showcasing how careful balance and precise control over aerodynamics enable their unique capabilities. Together, they make helicopters indispensable for situations that demand agility, precision, and vertical mobility. Major components of a helicopter. Helicopters are complex machines made up of several critical components, each playing a unique role in achieving flight and maintaining control. Understanding these components helps explain how helicopters operate and perform their versatile maneuvers. For one, main rotor system. The main rotor is the most critical part of a helicopter, responsible for generating lift and thrust. Rotor blades, shaped like airfoils, they rotate to create lift. Swashplate assembly, transfers pilot commands to the rotor blades by adjusting their pitch. Rotor hub, connects the blades to the mast and allows for their movement. 2. Tail rotor, found at the rear of the helicopter. The tail rotor counteracts the torque created by the main rotor, stabilizing the aircraft. Directional control, tail rotor thrust is adjustable, enabling your rotational control to steer the helicopter. 3. Fuselage. The fuselage is the central body of the helicopter that houses the cockpit, cargo, and various systems. Aerodynamic design provides structural integrity and minimizes air resistance. 4. Cockpit. The cockpit is where the pilot controls the helicopter. Control systems, cyclic stick, adjusts the tilt of the main rotor for directional movement. Collective lever, changes the pitch of all rotor blades simultaneously for vertical ascent or descent. Pedals, adjust tail rotor thrust for your control. Instruments and avionics, navigation, communication and monitoring systems. 5. Engine, provides the power needed to turn the rotors. Types of engines, piston engines, found in smaller helicopters. Turboshaft engines, used in larger and more powerful helicopters. Transmission system, transfers power from the engine to the rotors while managing rotor speed. 6. Transmission system connects the engine to the main and tail rotors. Includes, main gearbox, drives the main rotor, 
tail rotor drive shaft delivers power to the tail rotor. Freewheeling unit allows auto rotation in case of engine failure. 7. Landing gear provides support and stability on the ground. Types of landing gear skids, lightweight and simple, common in small helicopters. Wheels found on larger helicopters for ground mobility. Floats or pontoons for water landings. 8. Fuel system supplies fuel to the engine to generate power. Components, fuel tanks, pumps, and filters ensure a steady and clean fuel supply. Nine, electrical system, powers avionics, lighting, and other onboard systems, includes batteries, alternators, and circuit breakers for functionality and safety. 10, flight control systems, mechanisms that transmit pilot inputs to the rotors for precise control, includes cables, rods, and hydraulic systems for smooth and responsive movements. 11. Auxiliary systems, additional features to enhance functionality and safety. Emergency floats for overwater operations. De-icing systems to prevent ice buildup on rotor blades. Cargo hooks for external load carrying. Each of these components works in harmony to enable a helicopter's ability to hover, take off, land vertically, and perform agile maneuvers, making it one of the most versatile aircraft in the world. How helicopter controls work. A helicopter's ability to hover, move in any direction, and perform precise maneuvers depends on its advanced control systems. These controls allow the pilot to manipulate the rotors and maintain stability during flight. Below are the primary control systems of a helicopter and how they work. 1. Cyclic control. Purpose. Controls the direction of flight, forward, backward, or sideways. How it works. The cyclic stick is located between the pilot's legs and tilts the main rotor disc by varying the pitch of the rotor blades during their rotation. By tilting the rotor disc, tilting forward moves the helicopter forward. Tilting backward moves it backward. Tilting to the sides moves it left or right. This is achieved through the swashplate mechanism, which adjusts the angle of the blades as they spin. And 2. Collective control purpose controls vertical movement, ascend or descend. How it works. The collective lever is located to the pilot's left and changes the pitch of all rotor blades simultaneously. Increasing the collective pitch generates more lift, causing the helicopter to rise. Decreasing the collective pitch reduces lift, causing the helicopter to descend. The collective control works in conjunction with the engine's power, which increases or decreases automatically to match the required lift. 3. Anti-torque pedals. Purpose controls your rotational movement and stabilizes the helicopter. How it works, the pedals, located on the floor, adjust the thrust produced by the tail rotor. Pressing the left pedal increases tail rotor thrust, rotating the helicopter to the right, your right. Pressing the right pedal decreases tail rotor thrust, rotating the helicopter to the left, your left. This control counteracts the torque generated by the main rotor, preventing the helicopter from spinning uncontrollably. 4. Throttle control purpose regulates the engine's power output to maintain rotor speed. How it works. In most modern helicopters, the throttle is automatically managed by a governor system. In older or smaller helicopters, the pilot manually adjusts the throttle to ensure sufficient power for the rotors during flight. Number 5. Swashplate mechanism. The swashplate assembly is a critical component that transmits control inputs from the cyclic and collective to the rotor blades. How it works. The stationary swashplate connects to the cyclic and collective controls. The rotating swashplate moves with the rotor blades, adjusting their pitch as commanded by the pilot. This allows precise control over the helicopter's movement and stability. 6. Coordinated control helicopter flight requires simultaneous use of all controls. Cyclic for directional movement. Collective for altitude changes. Pedals for rotational stability and yaw control. The pilot must coordinate these controls seamlessly to perform smooth maneuvers, such as hovering, turning, or transitioning to forward flight. 7. Hovering. Hovering is one of the most challenging helicopter maneuvers. The pilot must use the cyclic to maintain position, adjust the collective to counteract small altitude changes, manipulate the pedals to keep the helicopter facing the desired direction. Constant minor adjustments are necessary to counteract wind, rotor turbulence, and weight shifts. Conclusion. Understanding how helicopters work, from their major components to their sophisticated control systems, highlights the ingenuity behind their design and functionality.
These machines exemplify the perfect balance of science and technology, enabling humanity to explore new possibilities in the air.